Hi everyone. Welcome to part two of the summertime pasta lasagna cooking party. Uh, thanks for joining me again. Ooh, that sounds so like official. Thanks for joining me again. I'll be your host, tiny chef in the house. Um, I literally have been cooking all day and I want to tell you that this is the longest lasagna making time. I would say I've been making this lasagna since Tuesday. Um, why do I say that? Um, I say that because on Tuesday I picked up the vegetables for this lasagna from Coldwater Creek Farm. So first of all, you're gonna need, oops, excuse me, lots of vegetables. You're gonna need, um, I think I used about three pounds of vegetables. You can use whatever vegetables you have Maybe you're growing some in your garden and you have too much zucchini or squash. Um, maybe it's on its way out, it's gotten a little bit big. So you're gonna use three pounds of any kind of vegetable from your garden that you want. And you're gonna grill it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because I think you guys can handle that. If you don't have a grill, you can either buy a grill pan and do it on the stove, which is what I did. We do have a grill, but it's so hot today. Um, you can either use a grill or you can just saute your vegetables until they're soft. Okay, but a grill gives really nice flavor. Look how beautiful these grilled vegetables are. Yummy! I use eggplant, zucchini, and squash. I uh, do want to give you a quick tip about the eggplant. So sometimes people say, ooh, I don't like eggplant. Typically because either it's undercooked or it's bitter. So what I want you to do is when you cook it, before you cook it next time, after you cut it, Sprinkle it generously with salt. Let the eggplant sweat. When the eggplant is like, has a bunch of brown water sitting on the top of it, rinse the eggplant off, dry it, pat it dry with some paper towels, then you're ready to cook it. And I'm telling you, it is so delicious. You will love it. So anyway, you're gonna have three pounds of your grilled vegetables way before they're grilled, okay? For the tomato sauce, um, I did something kind of cool today. So I took uh, three pounds of tomatoes from the garden that were a little bit overripe, and I cut them in half and put the skin side down on the grill and just let them cook like that so they had a nice smoky flavor. Threw a little bit of oregano and um, some garlic in a food processor and just blended them together. So that's our sauce. If you want to cheat, and you, either you don't have tomatoes or the thyme, which I understand, uh, it takes a lot of time. You could use a jar, a canned tomato, jar tomato, tomato sauce, something like that. Just make sure, like I always say, you're paying attention to the ingredients. Um, make sure there's no sugar or anything weird in your ingredients, okay? So those are two things that are going in a lasagna. The third thing, Windy Hill Farm. If you don't live near Charlotte, it's all right. You probably can't get Windy Hill Farm um, ground pork or any kind of ground meat. You could use um, sausage, any kind of ground meat. You need one pound cooked. So I have one pound of uh, Italian sausage that I cooked this morning ready for you. Delicious, broken up into pieces. This is all going in the lasagna, okay? So what we've already talked about, just in case you're in, are the grilled vegetables, tomato sauce, your sausage. I'm using um, goat cheese. So you can use goat cheese, you could use Parmigiano Reggiano, you could use any kind of cheese that you love. I'm using goat cheese. We're gonna make a bechamel in a little bit and I wanna show you how to do that because that is really something special. So we're gonna put uh, bechamel in it. And um, of course, the most important part, the pasta. So I've been having fun this morning uh, rolling out the pasta. I think you guys may have seen yesterday that I made a spirulina pasta, which made it green. So this morning I was like, what would happen if I just started playing around with like making pasta sheets that had multicolor and flavor. So that's the spirulina pasta rolled out with the regular whole wheat flour. I do want to show you how to do that just in case you'd like to try. 
So I know all of you made your pasta yesterday with me, or maybe you didn't, maybe you made it today. Um, you might need a little refresher course on how to roll it out. So today I made more pasta, if you can believe it or not. Made more pasta. So this is a whole wheat flour pasta. And this is a pasta that I made with whole wheat flour, eggs, and paprika to make it a little bit orange. But you could use whatever kind of flavored pasta you want. Remember our first step when we're rolling out the pasta? Does anybody remember? Hello everyone, how are you? All right, the first step is to make that cow tongue is what I call it, make the cow tongue. It's an easy way to remember. Make your cow tongue. I might need a little bit of flour on the outside of this. So put a little flour on there, keep it from sticking and put it on your thickest setting. It's gonna be a little bit loud for a second, okay? Remember, we're gonna roll it out slowly. We're gonna to go to number six on the um, KitchenAid mixer. I'm gonna roll that one back through, which I normally don't like to do, but it tore just a little bit, prob probably because it hasn't had much time to rest. So that's very important, and I told you yesterday, you need to let your pasta rest so the gluten chain forms so you can have elasticity. All right, so you're gonna go down to number two. Remember guys, don't skip automatically to number six, even if you're in a hurry, because what'll happen is this will expand and then contract. So you need to stretch it out slowly, just like your muscles. All right, number three. Keep going down one by one till Number six, I like that really thin pasta in my lasagna. It's up to you what you like. I'm gonna stop right there just so I can show you how to make the colorful pasta. I'm gonna go back to number one with the uh, paprika pasta. Okay, so it should be a little bit reddish brown in color. I'm gonna start on number one with that one. We're gonna pretend like this is number six pretty thin. That was Gruner our little uh, cuckoo clock. Hey, hey, Bruna. So I hope y'all are having a good Friday. What y'all been doing out there? Anything fun? God, it's you know what here. It's about 82 degrees in the house. Probably why y'all are thinking, what in the world is going on with her hair today, y'all? It's so hot, I couldn't blow dry my hair all the way because um, it wouldn't dry because it's so hot and I'm sweating, so little secret reveal. All right, I'm gonna stop on number three. And again, if you're just joining us, I'm showing you how you can make this really cool band stripe in the middle of your pasta like that. So what you can do now is just take a knife and cut whatever shape you wanna put into the pasta. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be just any kind of shape. I just did a stripe like that, okay? And I'm just gonna run it through. Voila! Very cool, right? You can make any kind of shape. It does this kind of like chevron thing here, which I really love. And then you can make it thinner. That's number five. And then you can go down to number six if you want to for the lasagna. So that's so easy, right? You guys are learning something new, I hope. Beautiful, beautiful pasta. All right, who else out there loves pasta as much as I do? I really do love it. Kind of a freak about it. Okay, woo, I need an assistant. Laura, can you fly down from New York to help me? So I have all this beautiful pasta. Fresh pasta, okay. Remember, just literally get dropped into boiling water, pulled out, and put into the dish. Doesn't take long to cook at all. Um, I actually froze this this morning. It's been sitting out for about five minutes and it's already thawed out. But um, this was frozen. You can freeze the sheets just like this and have them ready for whenever you want, or you can dry them. But I like to freeze my pasta, it's just me. Um, 
it works really well and it doesn't take that much longer to cook maybe it adds on a few seconds to a minute depending on what kind of if, it, if you have a stuffed pasta obviously it's going to take a little bit longer okay so i'm going to drop this in our boiling water right here One, two, three, it's done. That's the quick part. So beautiful too, I want you guys to look at this. Oh my gosh, are you guys drooling? I'm drooling. I am drooling. All right, so these are our beautiful pasta noodles. Then on the uh, flip side, reverse, I, um, made some green noodles too aren't they beautiful and i just laid the other piece of um pasta on there in weird shapes just because i thought it was really beautiful kind of um you know wild and free like me all right so we're gonna drop this in same thing one two three pull out so quick so easy I don't know what your excuse is if you haven't tried to make homemade pasta yet because I have made it so easy for you to understand and so easy for you to do. Anybody can make it. So if you haven't done it because you think, oh, that's too hard or that takes too much time, I don't want to hear it. It's amazing. I'm telling you, once you have it, you can never go back to the box. Look at this beautiful sheet of pasta. Gorgeous, right? So... I like to make the lasagna in a cast iron skillet. You can use any kind of baking dish that you want. This will feed like six to eight people, okay? Remember we used 300 grams of flour and three eggs yesterday. That's not very much, it feeds a lot of people. Three pounds of grilled vegetables, three pounds of grilled tomatoes, pureed with a little bit of garlic and oregano, one pound of sausage, ground sausage or whatever kind of ground meat you want cooked okay it must be cooked before it goes in the lasagna and then whatever kind of cheese you want and we're going to make the vegetable in a second but that being said i want to show you guys that i like to um, get a cast iron skillet and oil it up and i'm just going to lay these pasta sheets inside just like this or however you want Let's see, maybe these guys should be on the outside and our odd man out should be in the center. Isn't that gorgeous? Wish you could just smell everything and be here with me cooking this. I miss all of you guys. Come and cook with me. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So, okay, the next thing we're going to put in is a little bit of tomato sauce. When I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. You don't want to drown it, okay? Look how gorgeous. Can you see this? Beautiful. Y'all, it smells so good, I can't. Woo! All right, so that's our tomato sauce. A little bit of ground meat. Just like so. Then you've got your grilled vegetables, whichever ones you ch you've chosen to use. If you really don't like eggplant, that's fine. But if you try that thing that I told you at the beginning, I think you might like it. Make a little layer of mixed vegetables, already grilled and seasoned with salt and pepper and any herbs that you like. A little bit of cheese. And now we're going to make the bechamel. And you can just keep making layers like that as much as you want, as big as your dish is. Now this is as teeny tiny little dish just for two people but um like i said this will make uh, a dish for six to eight people i've got one in the oven that i made earlier i told you i've been working on this recipe all day uh, i just don't show up and do these videos you know it takes me a lot of planning and stuff so i can get it right just for you all right so i'm going to take this boiling water off turn my back to you. All right, now we're going to make the bechamel. I feel like this is a sauce that everybody should know. If you like to eat 
Macaroni and cheese. Who likes macaroni and cheese? Me, me. My favorite. So if you like macaroni and cheese, this is your jam. Um, if you like uh, lasagna, this is your jam. Bechamel is a great way to teach people how to salt things too. This is how I teach people how to, to season food, okay? If you taste the bechamel without any salt in it, it, it tastes like wallpaper paste. It's disgusting. You add a little bit of salt to it, mix it around, taste it again. Hmm, tasting a little better. Add a little bit more salt, mix it around, taste it again. Hmm, I might double dip this, but you're not going to. Get a new spoon, add a little bit more salt, stir it around. Oh, you definitely want to go in there for that second dip. You know it has enough salt, okay? So if you taste your bechamel and it's gross, you don't have enough salt. That being said, for the bechamel for this dish, you're going to need equal amounts of butter and flour. That's called a, anybody, anybody, roux. Roux to you too. All right, that's called a roux. R-O-U-X. Butter. This is a quarter cup of butter. I'm gonna melt it. When the butter's melted, I'm gonna pump this up a little bit. When the butter's melted, we're gonna add flour. I'm gonna whisk it in. Hope you guys can kind of see what's going on in here. Melt, melt. All right, this is a quarter cup of flour, quarter cup of butter. What's that called again? A roux. A roux is used like as a thickening agent for a lot of things. You can thicken a soup or you can thicken a gravy, all kinds of things with a roux. Okay, we're basically going to thicken some milk with a roux. I think, Laura, you sent me a text earlier asking if you could use buttermilk for this recipe. I think so, but um, if you like the taste of buttermilk, I'm just going to put it that way. All right, let me turn this bad boy down. All right, she's melted now. When you add your flour, you want to add in a little bit of flour at a time, okay? So I like to just kind of bump a little bit up against my whisk. Bump, bump, bump. You don't want any lumps. Nobody likes lumpy sauce. Go home with your lumpy sauce. All right, a little bit more. Again, I'm using whole wheat flour, so you can do that too. You should do that too. Oh, I just should have you. All right, so you're gonna cook the roux. That could be a little bit thicker, but I don't have any more flour because I used it all for the pasta. So we're gonna pretend like that's a little bit thicker, more tasty. When you see it, once it starts bubbling, the roux is cooked. Or like my Italian friends like to say, it's cooked. And the pasta is striped, not striped, striped. Striped pasta, striped, I mean cooked roux. We've got a fourth a cup of butter, a fourth a cup of flour. When it bubbles, we add the milk. Now. This is important to know, and I like to tell people, because nobody told me this stuff when I was learning, and I had to learn the hard way, and all kinds of weird things were happening. And so I like to tell people that when you have your roux bubbling, and it's thick enough, and you start adding in your milk, um, first of all, you don't want to have real cold milk, or it'll splatter a little bit on you. Number two, um, you always use whole milk. You can use the other milks but whole milk will give you the best flavor. Number three, it seizes up as soon as you start whisking it in because it gets really thick. Keep whisking, don't stop, because you're gonna be like, <clears throat> what just happened? Did I mess this up? Oh, shit. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but you know what I mean. So, it'll seize up on you. Just keep going, keep going. Excuse my French, what in the world? But you know what I mean. All right, here we go. So you're going to add in your milk. I have two cups of milk. Just for time's sake, I'm probably not going to add it all, so this will thicken pretty quickly. So I can show you how to finish out this amazing lasagna. So I'm going to pump it up. You just want to stay with it. Um, if you walk away from the bechamel, it'll become like really congealed and cooked on the bottom and the liquid will be up on the top. You can bring that back. That's another thing I think you ought to know, like there are ways to fix things. If that happens, 
slowly just keep whisking it until it starts to get a little bit more emulsified okay and then um, if you need to add a little bit more milk you can if it's too thick another tip like if you want to make the bechamel in advance and keep it in the fridge um, you can do that but it'll get that little skin on the top just like grits would or anything like that so what you can do um, it's already ready what you can do is put a little bit of plastic wrap off of your burner please because if flames go up to your plastic wrap you're in trouble um, a little bit of plastic wrap directly on top and then put it into your refrigerator and the next day you can just pull that off and all the skin will come right off okay so this is even a little bit too thick so I'm gonna you should be able to pour it but it should not be too liquidy I'm gonna show you, you should coat your spoon if you guys are like what in the world I can't keep up I'm gonna post this recipe later for you with pictures so you can do it again. So I've been thinking today, like, what kind of prize should I give to the person who completes this recipe first? I like to have some kind of incentive for you to actually do this um, because I love to see you guys cooking and trying new recipes and, and being creative. It really brings me great joy. So, hmm. <laughs> what could I give you? Anybody? Anybody? How about a tiny farm mug? Oh my goodness, I forgot to bring it over here with me, but I have a mug and it's really beautiful and uh, I ordered three of them just to look at to see if I liked them or not and it has our new logo for the tiny farm on it. It's a tiny farm mug. So you can remember me. I will send it to you in the mail if you don't live in Gold Hill or close by. But let me tell you the rules. Whoever completes this recipe first must take a picture of the completed recipe and post it. Well, you can either post it on your Instagram and tag me in it, okay? Or you can do the same on Facebook and I'll look at the time and see who does it first. So that's your challenge. You have to post a picture and tag me so that I know, because if you don't tag me, then I don't know that it's completed. All right, so this is our bechamel, really lovely. See, nice and thick, it's sticking to the sides of the pan, but it's still liquidy, so you could pour it onto something. Salt, I'm gonna add some salt to it. Remember, add salt, whisk it in, give it a second to like relax and the salt to get into whatever the sauce that you're making. Don't just taste it immediately after. I've made that mistake too, so learn from me. Add the salt, whisk, 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 taste real fast. Maybe it hasn't gone out into the sauce yet and then you over salt something. So then you taste it. Hmm, it's good, but not great. A little bit more. Mmm, oh man, that's some good stuff. Maybe I might like to have more. Nope, not ready. A little more salt. Oh, dang, that is good. I'm going in for that second bite. It is ready, okay? So your bechamel is ready when you wanna go in for the second bite. All right, so now I'm gonna show you. Back on here. Remember, this is our beautiful lasagna that I was showing you earlier. You're going to now drizzle a little bechamel Man, am I making y'all hungry? What time is dinner, right? What time are y'all coming over? Who's coming to see me? I really would like to see all of you. Wouldn't it be nice? Et voila. You keep going with the, lay um, with the layers, and then you're gonna put a little bit of olive oil on the outside. I like to, here's a word, a word that I made up, scrimple. But you know what I mean when I say scrumple, right? I'm gonna scrumple these edges right on the inside. Just like that, see? And they look so beautiful and they kind of get crispy if you're into that, if you're into the crisp. Scrumple, scrumple up. That's my made up word, scrumple. Scrumple up your edges. You can uh, put a little bit of olive oil to really make them brown and crisp them up. And then put it in the oven until you think it's ready. Everything is cooked already, but so you don't have to worry about anything 
you know, having to come to temp or whatever because it's already cooked, everything's ready, so you're just getting it nice and hot and crispy. And you're gonna pull it out and look at it and you're gonna let it rest for a few minutes because it's gonna be freaking piping hot. And then you're gonna cut into that and have the best lasagna of your life. Guarantee it. So let me show you what that'll look like now. I'm gonna have to turn my back to you again. I really hate doing that. All right, let's see. Let's see what we've got in the oven here. Oh yeah, that is the good stuff right there. Y'all, look at that. Amazing. This pan weighs 500 pounds and it's pretty hot, so I'm gonna put it down. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Hope you enjoyed hanging out with me again on another Friday for a cooking class. I hope you learn something. I hope you use up those summer vegetables. I hope you go to your local farmers markets and support your farmers there. Just dogging it right now in this heat from morning until night. So you can't hug them right now, but give them a, a hug from afar and blow them a kiss or something through your mask because they are uh, really working hard for it for you right now to get food on your plate. Um, support local farmers. Support Tiny Farm. Um, remember the challenge, okay? I want you to make this recipe. If you're scared to do it, I want you to face your fears and make your pasta and make something beautiful. You never know what might happen, right? And uh, post a picture when it's done, either on Instagram or Facebook. If you don't have Instagram, you can do it on Facebook. Tag me in it so that I know, and there's a timestamp on it, and the first person to finish the recipe will get a tiny farm mug. And you can remember us here in Gold Hill in our tiny farm empire. Um, I love you all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and making my day. I'm working for you. See you guys next week. Ciao.